What's going on guys? Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be going in depth. I'm going to need water because I'm going to talk your ear off. We're going to go full, just full detail on this by Vic 55 inch four player ultimate arcade cabinet known as Secret Wars. Go get a beer or whiskey, whatever you want to drink because I'm going to talk your ear off. I'm going to get water. We're going to power this thing on. Let's go. All right guys, I'm actually gonna power on the unit. I just finished filming the brief overview video, turn off the cabinet, now I'm gonna just do a full power on, and I'm gonna take the time right now to do my usual thing. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. If you were following me, you would have seen all the details, all the stuff on this. I'm right now gonna get ready to power on the unit. Uh, I'm making sure right now everything is powered on. I always like to make sure the TV is fully on, and then, I turn on the PC. Uh, big thing, it also comes into like V-pins. You want the TV to be on before the PC. This way the PC recognizes what, you know, resolution and it's hertz and all that. So the TCL right now is booting on. I'm gonna press the power button now and we're just gonna let it go. On this one again, we're gonna go full force, full in-depth on this build. And it's also great because you'll see the whole boot process on this PC and what it does and all that. But get ready, I'm gonna talk your ear off. I did mention something inside the overview video about the specific deal I made to build this cabinet. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are looking forward to that, so I'm gonna most likely start with that. We'll go into like the artwork, obviously. We'll talk a little about the customer. We'll do some add-on features. I'm gonna show off the Bluetooth aim track. I'm also gonna show off the May flash bar Wiimotes. There's just a lot to go over, so why not? We just do our regular thing. Uh, right now, as you can see, the PC is powering on. We are on our desktop. It's usually your preference. I always do it. I do have Hyperspin set to automatically launch 30 seconds after login. That is a task schedule thing. It's very simple. You don't need that. You can let me know if you don't want that. I could remove it. Essentially, it's kind of good to you know give it that 30 seconds so the PC is fully booted and then everything launches as you can see there. Boom, we are ready basically now to game on and play. Now again, take a look at the overview because I know it's going to be a little bit repetitive, but I'm going to hit you real quick. Again, this is a hyperspin based system. This is running my 42 terabyte hyperspin. It's a whole decked out PC, i7, 32 gigs of RAM, running a 3060 on it as far as the graphics card. Four Xbox controllers, just look at the past video on that. Um, again, hyperspin builds are hyperspin builds. They do take their time. And again, I only do one hyperspin build at a time. There's a lot of programming that gets down and done. This is not a simple copy and paste thing that people assume. It's okay to assume that, but it's just, it's not. It definitely is not. Now, I feel like I wanna start this video talking about the deal. Um, again, if you looked at the overview video, I mentioned this. And doing this for a long time, especially now that I introduced the Bivik cabinet, and I was gonna expect this, um, you know, people look at like a Game Room Solutions cabinet, they see the cost of the cabinet. But then once I mention the price of a fully spec decked out system that I supply everything, I hit them with the price and they're like, oh shit. Uh, you know, I was thinking it's a thousand dollars and I just, I face palm so hard when people think that they're going to get a 40, 42 terabyte with a 55 inch screen with a four player deck for a thousand dollars and I don't want to sound like a jerk, but no, it's just an, a simple no, it's no, it's no. <laughs> now, I, I laugh at myself because I'm talking to myself, but yeah, you, yes, I get, I get inquiries like that and it's okay to inquire. I don't want you to get that, but it's just, you know, when you get hit with a lot of those, it's kind of, it, it gives me a reason to pause and I'm like, like, do people really think that? Or is somebody like just playing a joke on me? Like, you know, cause that's where like customers don't really do the research. They don't, the, the biggest challenge that people don't even understand the cost of hardware alone. Oh, if like a button's a dollar, a button's a dollar. I don't know about that. Uh, especially if you're doing like an led button, but you know, the biggest thing is that people don't even look at the price of the PC. That is what really irks me. Um, you know, you gotta understand, Specs are important depending on what you want to play. You're going to see next to me, I don't know if you see now, but that's going to be the next video. That is a 10 terabyte hyperspin build that's going out. I'm going to talk about that build later on, but 
it's kind of a apples to oranges. That's running like a pre-built HP, almost, it's an Optiplex version of an HP versus a totally custom MSI build from the ground up, buying the motherboard, buying the power supply, buying the RAM stick, everything separate. So now what am I getting at? Uh, basically, I'm gonna be introducing a new option. Uh, and I've done this option in the past. Uh, and you know, now that I, I've done several of them and I know now how to word it, uh, I feel comfortable enough to now introduce it and announce this option. Because in all honesty, like, you know, people will inquire about this cabinet. People inquire about Project Canada all the time. And I give them a price and they just don't agree with it. And it's not that you have to agree with it. The biggest thing is that they just don't understand the price. So let me now announce this whole new price thing, okay? Here it is. You basically have to supply me everything. Everything. You're going to supply me everything. All I'm going to supply is the wood for the cabinet. I'm going to make the artwork and print it. I'm going to do the T-molding and I'm going to configure the PC. You will supply everything else. Everything. And I'm, I, and no joke, people inquire about it and I write like everything with a bunch of G's like G, 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 G. And they're like, wait, Vic, you mean like everything? Yes, everything. I have to get the joysticks. Yes, you have to get the joysticks. Vic, can you send me like the links though to the joysticks and which ones I should get? No, I won't do that. Because that now is like, that's time for me. And I don't want to sound like an asshole, but no. I'm going to send you the two websites. I'll even say it now. I get most of my stuff from Groovy Game Gear and Paradise Arcade. And as far as like the trackball, it's uh, Ultimark. Th th those are your three main sites. I will then tell you go and find the buttons, find the joysticks. Before you purchase it though, you're going to send me the links and figure everything out. That is what happened with this cabinet here. And in all honesty, the customer was so like relieved. He actually messaged me and he goes, Vic, you know what, man? I'm reconsidering you just doing everything. Meaning I'll go out and buy everything because the pricing is not that different. And that's just the biggest thing. People just don't really understand the cost of the hardware. PCs that I put in these things that I always recommend, again, current gen stuff, 3060 Ti or higher, People think it's like a $400 PC. No, especially once you start adding 40, 42, 46 terabytes worth of drives. It's up there. You know, it, it, that's what it is. So this right here is a perfect option. Again, yes, this customer bought everything. He bought the yellow joystick. He bought the red joystick. He bought the blue joystick. He bought the art. He bought the LEDs. He had a right in. Hey, I need eight red buttons and any 20 orange buttons. He had to write all that in. Yes, that's that's what it is. And I'm happy to announce it because I've done many builds. I have a build right next to me, same exact thing. Customer supplied everything and I'm, boot, I'm doing my part. That's like the best way to do it. And I'm happy to announce that option. And you know, whether you think it's still high, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I really don't know what to tell you, but I'm, I'm happy to, to let this option go because I've done it in the past and people do like it. And honestly, I like it because you get to actually like sit down and really see the cost of things. Now I'm gonna sound like a broken record because I have already gotten messages. When I mean everything, I seriously mean everything. You know, I, I, it's funny because I get the email and then I, I, even on Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger, I write back like everything with a bunch of G's and people still like question like, Vic, I have to get like the cup holders. Vic, I have to get the TV mount. Vic, I have to get the LEDs. Vic, I have to get the power strip. Vic, I gotta get the three. Yeah, you have to give me everything. Uh, you know, the sound you have to give me. The LEDs, the TV mount, you, the Xbox controllers, the, the USB extent. You have to give me everything. All I'm gonna give you is the wood, the artwork printed, the T-molding done, and the configuring. So, Vic, does that include an LED blinky? No, it doesn't. You have to go out and get the LED whiz. No, I can't stress it enough. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but that's what it is. And I'm happy to announce that this customer and many other customers in the past, they've done it. And honestly, they feel so great that they did it this way. All right, so now we're going to talk about like the controllers and we'll get into like the Wiimotes and all that. I'm going to end the video with the artwork because some people like it or not. So I'll end the video with the artwork and all that. So 
we do have the four player deck right here. My decks are currently 49 to 50 inches wide. They are removable obviously. And uh, you know, I could do any custom size if you want. If we have to add more features and all that, they could go wider, they could also go deeper. You know, you let me know, that's where the customization gets into it. I knew I was gonna talk, so I grabbed a seltzer and the convenient, beautiful cup holder area is great. Again, eight button layouts for players one and two, six button layouts for players three and four. Customer said, Vic, what do you suggest? I always suggest that button layout. Playing modern fighters like Mortal Kombat 11 is gonna utilize the eight buttons. You're basically future-proofed with that. On this one, we do also have the dedicated four-way. He did see Project Canada and he's like, oh, I like those servos. But I think what happened is that when he saw the price of the servos, he also came to a um, theory. He goes, hey Vic, the servo is a motor. What happens if the motor dies? I said, well, you obviously gotta buy a new motor. So he's like, you know what Vic, uh, you know, let's just keep it with a regular dedicated four-way. So I just have your standard four-way joystick with the three buttons here. And it's great because I do make the buttons, I cut out the layout so it's comfortable. As you can see, player two joystick, it's not totally in the way. I'm able to play like Galaga comfortably. I'm not fighting, like my arm isn't here. I'm not fighting it there, so it's awesome. He did also want the Tron stick, the flight stick, and we were also looking at the spinner. I'm personally, and I'll keep this in mind, I'm gonna give you my opinion on the Tron stick. I'm not a Tron player. I don't know Tron. I don't know, I don't know anything about it. But apparently, discs of Tron, you do need a spinner and the flight stick. And we were gonna do a spinner on it, but then the customer changed his mind. Uh, I, maybe we didn't, he didn't really like the price of the, of the spinner. I don't know. We changed our mind. So, here's my opinion on the Tron stick. The Tron stick is basically an eight-way joystick with a fire button. And this Tron stick only has one button. It's only one button. I get people that are like, hey Vic, is there like two buttons? No, this Tron stick only has one. Uh, Ultimark makes a black flight stick that has two buttons. But as far as the blue LED Tron, in my understanding, from this came from Glenn Retro Show, GRS, it's only one button. Now, I am loading up this of Tron, and I have a basic setup where instead of the um, spinner, you could use the track, uh, the, um, the joystick, and you could actually also use the track mode. So, as you can see, I'm able to control my player. You can see it there, I hope so. That I could basically use the trackball and dodge with this. I don't play Disc of Tron, so right now people are like, Vic, you suck. I'm like, yes, I know, because I don't, I, I'm right now, the hand-eye coordination is not happening with this. Uh, <laughs> but again, at least I'm able to use the trackball for that uh, aiming thing. This is really where the spinner would go. Oh, I could fire more, awesome. It, it works, there is substance to it. Again, track, the Tron stick is cool, but in my mind, it's an, it's an eight-way joystick with a trigger. Um, you know, and again, I, I have it mapped out accordingly. This specific game, you could go into the game options for this specific game and adjust. So this is like an analog, like the, the option for analog, I have it set to trackball. And it's cool. There is substitutes, it works. You do also have your pause feature, so in the game, I could just pause, I could go eat. I did that ever since I did Project Canada, I added the, the pause feature. This also does have LED blinky, so I had the volume low, but you can see the LEDs are on, Tron stick is on, it's there. In all honesty, this fire button here is mapped out to button one. So there's one, two, three button ones on player one, basically. Now again, we're talking about like, I'm gonna just talk about the LED blinky, because I do get this question a lot with LED blinky. If you see Project Canada's video, it was the first time I used the LED Blinky and I had my personal opinions on it. Um, oh, what do I wanna say? Uh, LED Blinky, I use the LED Wiz. I do not like eye packs. If you see my videos in the past, I don't deal with eye packs, I don't like eye packs. LED Wiz has 32 outputs, and as you can see, there is more than 32 buttons on this. So basically, I kind of manipulate and use LED Wiz accordingly, so for example, Player one and two is on its own inputs. But player three and four, I have it basically in sync together. So port 18, which is player three start, I have it actually going out to player three and player four start. This way, I have enough inputs for the lights. Now I'm gonna get into real quick the buttons here. Arcade games really only have six buttons. You don't have any games that have seven or eight buttons. So what did I do? I basically lit 
I put a daisy chain to button three to button four. So yes, if button three is lit, button four is also lit. Same thing on the bottom. I have button seven, or I should say button eight, is linked to button seven. So if there is uh, six buttons, it's going to button six and seven. I should say it like that. This way, I probably confused the hell out of you. But you know what I mean. These two buttons are linked. Same thing with the players three and four. The end buttons here are linked together. So some games, like I just had with Dissatron, it had five buttons lit. That's, in reality, it was a four button game, I suppose. I don't know. And the fifth button was also lit. This right now is Millipede. I do have the trackball. I could put my coins in. I could play. I got my volume here. And we could game. So again, Z533 with the subwoofer in the rear. I love the trackball. I'm a big vertical trackball fan. Uh, honestly, I personally, on my setup, it's going to shock you. I have actually now, shit, I have now put bezels on my personal build. So yes, uh, I have moved on. I no longer have 16 by nine games stretched on my personal cabinet. So games like The Simpsons, TMNT, Street Fighter, I actually now have the bezels. I kind of get it now and uh, hey, it's an easy switch. If you don't like the bezels, we, I could take it off. It's very simple, like a team viewer in and such. I could pause, I could go eat, and I could exit. Awesome, I'm gonna exit out. Uh, I did want to launch real quick, uh, I'll go back. Uh, I'm gonna try to do this live. I don't want to cut it. Uh, we'll launch like Galaga just to show you like it's kind of cool when it comes to the Tron stick that you could basically control the ship and fire all on the um, the Tron stick. It's cool. You know for me personally is it worth it? Uh, I don't this is me. Me? I'm not putting a Tron stick on my cabinet. Uh, I don't know this is Tron. I don't like Tron and that's my personal opinion. You can take it or leave it. But games like this is kind of cool. Galaga, you will be able to move this ship and fire too. So I'm gonna add coins. Again, Tron stick, it's an eight way joystick and I have it basically mapped out to the player one. So player one joystick is daisy chained here. So it's going to the dedicated four way and then it's going to the Tron. And as you can see, I'm right now firing Galaga. This is cool. Galaga's not meant to be played like that. Okay, but I could do it. So hate all you want. <laughs> It's cool. I mean, my only big thing, I have so many people that are like, hey, Vic, does the Tron stick have two buttons? And I'm like, oh, shit, I was going to take that. I'm like, the from I got this from Glenn Retro Show, GRS. Uh, and I've only found this to have one button. Crap. It's only had one button. So if you want the two button, you do need the Ultimark one. So now real quick, uh, cause I'm going to get in the habit. People do like to see this. They like to see how the system actually works live. So I'm right now because we're talking about the arcade stuff. Let's go in and we're going to play some Akari Warriors. Um, I just wanted to show this off because, you know, we're talking about arcade stuff. Even though you don't have the proper controls, you could still make it work. That's what's cool with main. You could basically press tab and adjust controls. Akari Warriors, you needed a dial joystick. You needed that 360 joystick. But I even have this set up to my virtual, uh, my vertical cabinet. I basically have the fire and the grenade. As you can see, only two buttons are lit. But the bottom two here is actually to rotate the player counterclockwise and then clockwise. Basically, I can still play. Uh, you know, is it the right way to play? No, but it works. There's basically ways that you could kind of get around it. I'm trying not to die. Again, I could hold down and you can kind of see how my hand is. Yes, it looks like a claw. I'm kind of crab clawing it. But honestly, it's not that bad. I could deal with it. I'm not going to catch like arthritis. But. If you, you know, you might say, Vic, why don't you just get a real joystick? Those joysticks are expensive. Um, so, you know, for the handful of games, whatever it's going to use, I personally would not buy the joystick, but at least I could play the game. You know, that's the big thing. And you could, if you don't like this idea, um, you could even probably set the trackball to spin if you want. It might be awkward, but you could probably set it up to fire here. And there's a lot of ways you could go about with it. Let's move on. Let's go into the light guns. Let's talk about that Bluetooth aim track. All right, so now we're gonna take the time real quick to talk about probably the one big feature that people saw in the promo video. And that was the wireless Bluetooth aim track light gun on this. I got a lot to say about this. Uh, as you can see in the videos, I only have one wireless light gun and the other one is wired. That is because after spending a week, a grueling week trying to get this to work, 
you could only do one Bluetooth gun. You cannot do two guns together at the same time. Impossible. I've spent a week going back and forth with Andy on Ultimark. Cool dude, but I kind of feel like he knows that it doesn't work, but he kind of still put me through the process, and that's my opinion. But I spent a week. Basically, the customer already bought the aim tracks from Ultimark. These are the non-recoil ones. And I mentioned to him, I said, hey, my buddy Brad D made a video about converting it to Bluetooth. Do you want to try it? He goes, yeah, Vic. In that situation, because I don't know the outcome, I bought the kit. I actually bought four kits. I bought two for me and two for him. Got it in the mail, and you know, obviously customers are like, yeah, if you're gonna spend the money on it, now that I know that one works, I'm just gonna charge them for one instead of two. I now have three Bluetooth kits in the basement just sitting. Uh, after a headache, I told Andy, I was like, dude, let's do the re return process. And he's like, just, you gotta mail them back to me. I got a quote to mail it back, and it costs more than the Bluetooth kit. So I said, screw it, I'm gonna keep it because maybe a future customer wants it. In my situation, because I have downstairs in the basement, I have my Bivik cabinet and I have my House of Rock, I have two separate systems, two separate cabinets, but I have two light guns that I could use both within each system, simultaneously, like easily, effortlessly. Basically, if I'm on House of Rock, I could unplug my aim tracks, I could plug it into my main cabinet and it still works. I don't have to go in and reconfigure stuff. When I went to Bluetooth, forget it. If I connected it to this cabinet, I took the dong, I went to the next cabinet, I would have to redo the process of the Bluetooth connect connection and the process is brutal. Uh, so all in all, you can only do one like on. I'm gonna make my whole, I'm gonna make a video on it because there's no videos on it. I'm gonna make my own video and stay tuned for that. But basically, if you're looking at two player aim track wireless, no, you cannot do it simultaneously. Anyway, we're gonna exit out. Let's get out of the car, Warriors. I have my dongle, so I do have the dongle from Ultimark. I'm running Windows 10, and I do have also like the driver that they say don't download. So I'm right now gonna put my dongle in. You're gonna hear like a Windows chime. We're gonna exit out. We're gonna go into my gun games. And uh, I don't know, we'll do the House of the Dead one. So long press, I'm doing this on purpose also to show you how it works and such. So. What's kind of cool is that ever since I got it, I only charged this thing one time and it's been a month and it's still like good to go. I don't think you can see the, the, the thing there, but it's good to go. I got my coins here. Only thing I did notice that if something, if I go off screen and bring it back, it goes like kind of haywire. I don't know if it's that light here, but once I shake it a little bit, I'm back to normal. But all in all, it's not that bad. It's, it's actually, it's, I like it. You know, it's wireless, I'm able to move around. I'm not like restricted to like a wire. It's just, you do get like that sometimes where it kind of goes haywire, but that's just me now being like, you know, picky and moving around. Let me try to turn the lights off. Turn off the garage lights. Okay. Let's see now how it acts there. So if I start moving, see this is where I, I always believe like it's my light because as you can see now, I'm okay. So I'm gonna blame the light on that. So again, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm right now moving live with it. I'm moving around. And the crosshair is there. You could see my crosshair. Uh, that's where I'm aiming. It's just, if I go off screen and then bring it back, sometimes I lose it. The one big thing I noticed though, if you press the left button, the right button, and the trigger at the same time, it actually shortens out the gun. And now my, I'm, I lose it now. I'm, I'm lost. I can't do anything until like I pull the trigger and it comes back. So it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It, it actually turns off the gun. And like there's nothing you can do with it. If I press all three buttons, Vic, what are the odds of you hitting all three buttons? I'll be honest, I do it sometimes. If you hit the left button, the right button, and the trigger, you, that's it. I, I lost it. I'm disconnected. It takes about five seconds to reconnect. But all in all, it's, it's nice, I'll be honest, I like it. Now though, you do still have a cord, so you do have a cord that's about, I don't know, like four feet long to charge the gun, but it's cool. Vic, like, would I recommend it? If you're doing one player, I recommend it. It's not too bad, but like I said, it's just that one thing, keep in mind, even now you can see it. If I press the three buttons, right, I lose the connection, but now once I get it back, I'm pulling the trigger and I'm not shooting. But if I press, look, I'm not, like, I'm not hitting that guy. But if I press like the, the left button, it now brings me back. You could see it while I'm talking. 
Weird. I don't know what the three buttons do. If you, but again, what are the odds of you pressing all three buttons? I don't know. But you'd be surprised. Sometimes you press the button three times. So there you have it. There's your wireless one. I'll bring in the wired one. I'll leave the lights off. Why not? Again, trying to do these videos where kind of simultaneously, like you know, showing it off. I might have moved my aim track a little bit. Nope. I'm good. Trying to show off, like you know, launching, exiting the systems, adding stuff, how the system reacts. Uh, I did a horrible job coiling this <laughs> after my promo video, uh, but cool. I'm gonna probably launch like the Rabbids game that just came out recently. And again, I have my dongle there, so player one is in. I'm bringing in player two. Doesn't matter which way or what order you put these in, this is always mapped out to player two. So now again, I have full control of hyperspin. I'm gonna launch this Rabbids game. I should have went alphabetical order, I could have jumped, but you know me, I can't talk and do stuff at the same time. Let's do Rabbids Hollywood. So long press button one. System's gonna go through. I got player two in my hand and I got player one. New game, uh, just got released, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks ago, depending on when the video comes out. That's the big thing. I launched the game, let it do its thing. Don't go crazy, go, hey Vic, what happened? Just gotta let it do its thing. Player one, player two. I'm gonna just start with player one first, then I'll bring player two in. But basically, again, I got the wireless one in my hand. And now it's like, there we go. It's not bad, like I said, it's, and it's definitely, just from this video, you can see it's it's my light. Uh, you know, it's an IR bar. Light could play a factor in it, so. Gotta let this cutscene go through. I don't wanna do too many cuts. Move the TV box and pull. So again, you cannot do the recoil gun with this Bluetooth kit, but all in all, it's it's cool. Little neat game for the kids. Pressing player to start, brings the light gun in, and as you can see, we have green crosshair for player two. Bringing player one in, and as you can see, I do have simultaneous two players going on on the screen. The crosshairs are separate. I could not do that with two Bluetooth kits. It's impossible, you cannot do it. But all in all, Pretty solid stuff. Get that little guy. Awesome. Not bad, right? Awesome stuff. I'm gonna exit out of Rabbit's holding down my exit button. That right now is hyperspin. It looks cool because it's like full screen. But I'm all done with the light buttons. I'm disconnecting both. And we're on to the next one, which we will do the Wiimote. So now it's pretty cool. I actually have behind the TV and I know it's I gotta work on one, or maybe I'm, I'll get uh, in touch with like a 3D printer. Uh, basically, I have two screws in the rear behind the TV uh, that could basically hold your light guns in place. Uh, so this way, instead of worrying about like storage, the light guns just sit on the two screws and uh, it's just nicely sitting there, that's it. You can tuck the USB behind the TV. Might as well use the storage on that. The wireless one, I'll be honest, that right there is probably going to be your biggest concern is making sure you don't lose this uh it is tiny i did try to put like velcro to it it's too small uh but basically i just kind of put it inside the little pocket that i have up top there uh again we're going to look now into the mate flash bar so let's check that out real quick So I got my main flash bar here, I got my two Wiimotes, and here's the thing when it comes to these USB devices, learn my lesson with Project Pattern and all that. Yes, we do have a main flash bar. This is strictly for the Wii. Yes, it's a bar, just like our Amtrak light bars. Uh, it's got a USB connection to it. When it comes to these USB devices, I am a big fan of people have to connect the USB device when they're ready to play it. I don't wanna keep this connected to the computer because it throws off all the IDs around. So what you're gonna see me do right now is like, Vic, what the fuck? Honestly, this is the best way to do it. You take your main flash bar, we're gonna connect the USB here. It's got like length to it. Kinda wanna just get out of the way. It doesn't really matter where exactly it is. It doesn't have to be center, 
But you basically just put it there. We're, I'm trying right now because the, the cord is like coiled up a little. That's it. Yes, I could mount it here. If I did that though, I would have to put a switch that would turn on and off the USB device. Um, for me, this is fine. Not to mention like now the USB wire has to go into the cabinet and down. If you forget to unplug it from the PC, now you're gonna rip it out. This right now to me is the most like least headache filled thing. I could also put like maybe some Velcro here so it doesn't like slide, but I could do that like, uh, like a grip, not like a Velcro to the actual deck. Just something that will keep it sturdy. This again, though, is basically for the Wii. Um, awesome stuff. Shockingly, so we have one May flash bar. That is a legit May flash bar. Anytime you're gonna do Wii modes, you need that May flash bar. If you're gonna do just Wii emulation, one May flash bar works with up to four Wii modes. So you don't need two May flash bars for that. You would, all, you would need two main flash bars if you're not gonna use light guns. If you're gonna use your Wii modes as light guns for like main, you need two main flash bars. This right now, another thing that shocked me is that he did buy these two knockoff uh, Wii modes from Amazon. I was very surprised, honestly. Um, if you go back on Robbie's ultimate um, console that I did, Robbie, we had to make sure he had bought legit Wiimotes. Um, definitely these came from Amazon because I got an Amazon package in the mail. Um, and they were in like a package bundled like this. It has the silicone cover and shockingly it works. Uh, I, got, I got player one and two so I'm gonna go let's play some tennis. The one thing I did mention to the customer that he didn't get but he should is he should get the nunchuck. Uh, I don't need the nunchuck because the Wii Dolphin right now is set to actual Wemo, So he can just plug in the nunchuck and it, it'll work. Um, but yes, it, it works. Uh, I, I played tennis uh, inside of my, uh, in the promo video and we'll play some tennis again, why not? And I'm kind of close to the bar. Not, not too close, but close. Hopefully I don't get hit with copyright, so I might mute that. Okay, two people right now, I hope I'm in frame. <laughs> I'm about to wreck the shit out of this. Like, solid. Honestly, like, it works. Again, May flash bar underneath. I had to just go into Dolphin and make sure that it said that the May flash bar was on the bottom. Boom, baby, let's go. Yep. Oh, it works. Listen, it works. Yes, honestly, you should put the, the straps on your wrist, uh, but it works and customer wanted it and he added it. Again, made flash bar from Amazon and I'm understanding and I believe these are two knockoff Wiimotes. Hit that, get that. <laughs> like, <wow. laughs> It's cool, listen, it, it's cool. <laughs> so now for video purposes and we're gonna try real quick, I have my modded Wii's and uh, I have my own nunchuck. This is like a legit one. So we're gonna exit out and we're gonna launch, we'll lower the volume. I'm gonna launch some Super Mario Galaxy and we'll see how the nunchuck plays with it. So let's see. The hard thing with Super Mario games is like, is it Super Mario or is it Mario? Cool, we got Mario Galaxy. I'm just gonna make sure that I have my connection in. And honestly, I did not test this. So now we're gonna test it. And from my understanding, it should work. But then again, I should remember that it is a knockoff Wiimote. It's silicone, which is in the way it's tight. So, plug this in. Cool. Up and down real quick. So, Mario Galaxy, long press button one. I got my Wiimote just vibrated. This one went to player two though. So, let me disconnect. And got to put this to player one. Dun, 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 dun. See, untested, I did not test this, but I have high faith in it because Dolphin, uh, it basically just says like, emulate real Wiimote. So as you can see right now, I'm gonna be married, my guy. The Wii, man, what a system. I honestly, I had one, I, I only played this. I only played Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Let's play this file. And I'm kind of close to the Mayflash bar right now. 
I'm like, what, like three feet away? You could go back more. So somebody might be like, oh, Vic, you were doing player two and it didn't register. Keep in mind, I'm doing two Wiimotes with one like body. So it might be a little bit different if you do two bodies, but it worked. I'm gonna lower the volume, this way I don't get hit with anything. And again, so knockoff Wiimote. Definitely 100% it's a knockoff. There's no Nintendo like branding on this thing. This is like the worst part with these Mario games. It's just the long intro, but hang out with me, just hang out. But all in all, just an amazing cabinet. I really can't wait for the customer to get it because he's, he's actually on vacation right now. Uh, he comes back on like the 9th and I'm gonna text him on the 10th and be like, hey, let's get this cabinet in your house, let's go. So yes, look. So, that works. Can I jump? Yeah, everything works. So Mario Galaxy, I'm gonna do this motion with my hand. Uh, <laughs> I can move my camera. This is what I told him, I said, listen, you just, he didn't get the nunchuck. So like, you should get the nunchuck. And I don't know what he spent on these Wiimotes, but as you can see, it works. That's it, man, it works. We're gonna exit out. Long press that, and again, for me, the easiest thing is just unplug that and be gone with it. I'm gonna probably just add some like grip. This way it doesn't like slide, but that's the easiest way. Let's talk about Xbox controllers, I guess. All right, now we're gonna do real quick the Xbox controllers. Xbox controller, Xbox controllers, I always suggest the Xbox ones. They're current gen, they got a bunch of different colors and all that, but the great thing is that you get the, the dongle that goes for Windows. It's a dongle, it's a little black dongle. Uh, goes for Windows and it could connect up to six Xbox controllers in one dongle. Uh, that's the only, like honestly, when it comes to like dongles and USB devices, like I said with the Mayflash, uh, that is the only like device that I keep in it. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm in Hyperspin but I just turned the controllers on so Hyperspin doesn't recognize it. It has, you have to still use the controllers here. Uh, again, that's because the controls are, are in. If you remove the controls, it would definitely recognize the Xbox controller because you need the Xbox controller. Uh, let's do real quick because somebody was like shocked uh, that I showed it off in an Instagram video. We're gonna launch some GoldenEye on 007. 007, you got Project 64 emulation and Moopin. Moopin right now is what's killing the game. It is very good. play the whole thing but that right there is amazing uh so we're gonna do real quick four player moopin goldeneye so again acts just like your regular n64 and i will make this comment i grew up with n64 and i'll be brutally honest if you're an x64 diehard fan you will want n64 controllers yes the xbox control i have it mapped out and it works but in all honesty you gotta get the N64. N64 here had six buttons, whereas you only have four. So like the C stick here is like what's mapped. So big thing with Moopin, if you are running Project 64, run four player GoldenEye. You might get like some flashing on the screen, but as you can see right now, I got player one, I got player three, I got player two, and I got player four. So it's cool, it, it, th this is like awesome. And it looks great, I mean, I'm playing freaking GoldenEye four player on it. It looks great, 55 inch screen, why not? Very simple, you could long press the Xbox button and it brings you back. Now that I'm back at the hyperspin, Xbox now is in control. Also, the arcade sticks are not in control as you can see because I have four Xbox controllers on. This is going into like what I was talking about with the controller IDs. Player one now is player five because I have one, two, three, four Xbox controllers on. So I don't have Joy to key map for player five, but you can still utilize the Xbox controller. Awesome. Now, real quick, like as far as like customization, I don't know if you saw the glimpses of it, but I'm a big fan of you know custom. Uh, I'm gonna launch, for example, Tony Hawk. The loading screen, just like I did Project Canada, just like I do all my builds, I like to make a very unique custom loading screen. It's your cabinet. It ties in with everything. So this is pretty cool. This is actually the control panel image. And then I added like the big, I'm, I'm proud of that logo that I made. Basically took the Black Panther head and then the miles and then merged it. And it just like follows the flow. You got it here, dead in the middle here, and then dead in the middle of the control panel. Just little stuff like that is, is custom. Uh, I also did the button inserts. So really it's standard button inserts, but I did for the starts 
two separate Black Panther logos and then two separate Spider-Man logos. Uh, doing like Miles Morales artwork is difficult because you find a lot more of like a regular Spider-Man. Again, I'm not a comic person, so I don't even know what I'm talking about, but basically I'm trying to find Miles Morales images. Uh, LEDs on this is standard LED strip. Customer supplied that. These are not addressable LEDs. I do have the cup holders mapped to the red on the LED strip. So the cup holders are not in line with the um, LED blinky. That's just kind of separate. So any console, going back to like if you remove the, 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 play, the, the PC, any console game, any game you launch, basically if you long press the Xbox logo, it will exit out of the emulator. And I will regain focus and I'll be able to pick the next game. Awesome, see that? Again, takes like, you know, depending on the system, one or two seconds to get regain focus, and you're back. I could exit out, I can launch a different game. It's just amazing. Love everything about it. I'm gonna real quick mention this. People always mention this to me, they ask me this. Only arcade emulators are for arcade sticks. I don't have the DS mapped to the arcade sticks. I don't have the three, no. All that is controller. I have all that, any console is mapped to that any handheld the game boy the virtual boy the, the switch i have that all mapped to the xbox controller hypothetically yes you could do the game boy the regular game boy to the arcade sticks i could just guarantee you that after 10 minutes you're not gonna like it if you need that mapped i could do it but just prepare yourself because it's not gonna be a great time so now one quick note real quick I, I have pinball on this um just keep in mind if you do have xbox controllers on one or all four or the aim track, the light gun's plugged in. Before you go pick another system, you're gonna to wanna to be sure to disconnect. So if you're playing like a light gun to a light gun game, you could keep them connected. But right now we just did GameCube and I'm gonna launch Pinball. I don't want the Xbox controllers on. So you do wanna turn off the Xbox controller before launching it. Switch, like take this for example. If I have the Xbox controller on and I go into MAME Arcade, player one isn't gonna be player one. So it's just kind of simple, kind of a step that you have to take in your mind. You know, disconnect everything if you're gonna to go to the next system. Uh, right now, I'm gonna do some pinball. It's actually funny, with this build, I was actually supposed to put pinball buttons on the side. And I'll be brutally honest, I didn't do it. Because just like the shoulder span on this, it hurts my back. Not to mention like, I would have to put it here Going like your wrist from here to here is a killer. Like for some reason now my shoulder is up. Whereas like if it was here, it now like I'm, my lower back is, I'm not trying to complain. It's just, it's awkward. Uh, so customer originally wanted me to put pinball buttons, but it just, it's not practical. Uh, I do have pinball on it though. So he did want his pinball stuff, but essentially you could use the sticks. And I have it basically mapped out to like the flipper buttons here. I could start this game. I'm gonna do continue, why not? Start a new game. So I basically have like, it's just like an Xbox controller. It's A, B, X, Y, and then the flipper is here. So I'm gonna long press A, launch. And I have just these two buttons here. Very simple. Again, at least you have pinball. So you do have pinball arcade, pinball FX2, and FX3. You have to play some pinball, why not? You can also use the Y button to change. So again, it's just like an Xbox controller. The Y button is to change the view. I can change the view. I can change the view. I can let it follow the ball. And it's good. It's in 4K, 60 hertz. So no like ball stutter going on. It's cool. Press the start button. I can exit out. All that. Simple. Pinball. Again, I wish I could have done this, but I knew like it's just an awkward position. My shoulders are just so weird. It's after 10 minutes, I'd be like, no, I'm done. So very simple. Also the joystick, you can nudge with the joystick. Cool. All right, cool. I'm going to show you guys now. We're going to remove the PC. I'm not going to really bring it downstairs because the wife's downstairs, but I'm going to basically have it external. I'll connect to the same TV, but hypothetically, I'll get the idea that you could use the PC separately from the arcade cabinet. Keep in mind, yes, the arcade is always on casters. I'm right now doing it with the PC on. I shouldn't really do that, so I'm going to actually turn off the PC. I always like to do that. Definitely want to turn off your PC. And I'm basically just going to turn the cabinet. I'm going to spin it. So you kind of see how the casters work. Got my power cord here. So again, it's one power cord coming out of the cabinet. 
PC is off, that's good. Uh, I do like to, well, I'm gonna keep the TV on because I'm gonna basically still use it. So, basically the one thing that I did learn, especially with doing this for years, we have to make sure that the USBs get connected back in its correct order. You have to connect the USBs back. If you don't, you're gonna mess up the IDs. That's the only one thing, but I'm gonna put, I'm actually doing this now, I'm gonna take a picture of it and then I'll make my adjustments and all that. But basically this is why I can't have like beautiful wiring because you could essentially disconnect the computer. So I'm right now gonna take my stuff out. Again, I'm basically disconnecting my, uh, my USBs. I'm taking out the monitor. I got up top, I have my, um, my extenders. I have the headphone jack here for the PC. And yes, as you see right now, this is kind of like a wires mess. It's a wiring nightmare. But once you get like the hang of it, it's, it's great. It's honestly a great, great, great thing. Cause again, like I said, you you spent the money on the PC. You might as well be able to use it. So you might have a really amazing monitor uh, in your like living room. So why not you know use it correctly and all that. So right now I'm totally clear. I'm just gonna take out the power cord. This way, like I could at least see it. So right now this is how someone would wrestle it. I do have the subwoofer here from the Z533, but you can muscle it. It's not too bad. Make sure that nothing gets ripped out. I also do have the power wire uh, that you definitely want to be careful with because of the external power switch. We don't want to rip out the power wire. So I right now I'm going to take this out here. So as you can see, my power wire is still there, and I do have it like tied inside so you can't rip it out. But it's basically just two little connections here, and done. I'm out. Boom, that is my gaming PC right there. Should have it. <laughs> cool. Now, I'm essentially gonna re-bring this back. Again, USBs are still connected. Um, I still have my HDMI here, that's great. I'm gonna now turn this around. And again, gaming PC, you can see all the drives here. I hope you can see it. Got all the drives here, the 30, 60. It's a big, it's a big computer. Customer got a big case. Doesn't have to be this big, but he got a big case. So basically, now pretend we went to like our bedroom or whatever, and we're gonna play it. So I'm gonna bring this HDMI cable close. I'm gonna connect my HDMI. I'm actually gonna take a picture of this later on. I need my power plug, obviously, for the PC. I mean, hypothetically, like, you wouldn't take this power cord out of the cabinet. You would just have an extra one if you want. We got HDMI. I got the power button, I got the, I'm set. I'll be able to, I can just turn it on. Now, I'll probably just swing you around. I'm doing this live. So again, I'm not gonna bring it to my basement because I just wanna get this done, but uh, computer's gonna boot like normal. And again, I have the Xbox dongle there. I have my Xbox controller. Once it fully boots, I'm gonna turn on my controller. And as you can see, we're booting. Gotta catch my breath. <laughs> but now again, this is acting just like how it normally did. PC is gonna boot. It now is gonna, you know, take 30 seconds to launch Hyperspin. I can take the time now and I'll just turn on my controller. Why not take a swig? And once it launches, you're gonna see it. It'll, it'll work. Again, launching like Mame Arcade, it's not gonna work. Because I have name arcade mapped out to the arcade sticks. I could make it work simultaneously. I just got to do more programming, but it's possible. You're talking about like, you know, another hour's worth of work, but it works. And like I said, I'm able to enjoy. You don't want to do hyperspin, then exit out of hyperspin and proceed. You know, you want to use it as Steam and all that. It'll work. That's it. I now could just launch my Steam account. I could play Counter-Strike. I could play Call of Duty. That right there, to me, is a game changer. It's not, it's not limited to the cabinet. You're able to move it around. And it's awesome. Now you need the keyboard and mouse, obviously, because now we removed the button. But yeah, if you want to turn off the computer, it's now like your regular PC. And that's it. It's the ultimate console inside of an arcade cabinet.
All right, so now I put the PC back inside. Uh, I always turn off the power. I don't want to be too close to the outlet because that's like, you know, wiring and all that. I basically put the PC back inside. I put all the USBs back in its appropriate space. I press the power button. And now basically the PC is going to boot. LED blinky should turn on. Players one to four on the arcade sticks is correct and such. That was the big thing that I learned when I was doing, especially like Project Kanda, even on my personal build, you've got to make sure that you put the USBs back. I'm going to literally, I took a picture of the PC. I'm going to blow up the picture and put like all the cores, the USBs have labels on them. So I'm going to put like slot one is US uh, Zinmo and slot two is like plays P4 or P3. But as you see right now, I'm back into arcade mode. All the USBs connected. I got the speaker connected. Uh, and same thing, 30 seconds, Hyperspin is going to boot. I don't need the Xbox controller because it's going to recognize player one arcade stick. Uh, it's just awesome. Like I said, I, I've yet to see anybody do it. Uh, I, I'm, I think I'm the only one that does that. And I think it's great. You know, you're spending money on a PC. You know, why have it bolted, hard mounted to a cabinet that you can't, you know, move around? And as you can see, Hyperspin is on and I have control, man. It's a thing of beauty. LED Blinky's on and I love it. I love every second of it. All right, so before the video ends, like I said, we'll talk about real quick the artwork on this. So again, I knew the customer wanted Black Panther and Spider-Man. So when it comes to like these superhero stuff, there's so many options. You could get comic uh, you know, images, you could get movie images, uh, if you do comic images, there's original version one Spider-Man and then there's original like, you know, uh, 1995 Spider-Man, that was like Spider-Man Miles Morales and there's so much like, when it comes to like comic characters, there's a lot that it's, it's image selection is insane. Uh, movie wise, a little bit difficult, but as far as like comic stuff, it, there's a lot, there's a plethora of images you could pick. So. First, we start out with Black Panther, and I actually made a, maybe I'll try to flash it if I still have it. Uh, I'll flash the image of the Black Panther when I did, where basically I took like a movie image, and he sent me the images. That's what I tell customers, you send me the images. All the images you see on here, customers sent me. So I had like on my computer, no joke, probably about like 85 comic images and movie images and all that. So start out with Black Panther, he sent me like the movie logo and all that and the and I send them like the version that I thought of and he's like, no Vic, I, I don't like it. It, it. It's very difficult to get like a good blend on that. Um, basically I came down to this comic idea. I was like, you know what? He sent me a lot of comic images. So I was like, let's go with like a comic book style theming, meaning like the blocks and the borders and all that. So uh, it really started with Black Panther. I should start on that side, but I'm gonna, I'll start with Spider-Man um, cause you're looking at him. Spider-Man, same thing, a bunch of images, but the cool thing is that I knew that I was gonna do comic borders. And to kind of distinguish between the two, I actually did web borders here. So I just zoomed in a little bit so you could see it more clear, but you see that border? No joke, on my Photoshop file, there's like 30 borders here. It's, this is 30 separate images. This is one image right here. That's a second image. This is a third image, this is a fourth. And as you can see, like they overlap in some instances. And I knew for the Black Panther side, I was gonna do regular border. And I was like, for Spider-Man though, we gotta kick it up. So I basically found a couple of web images and try to clean up the board, the, the edging. And I think it came out awesome. It's kind of cool, cause you could definitely see like, okay, Spider-Man with like the web border, awesome. You could just distinguish it. And images are great. Again, Gulf Coast decals does the prints. I supply the image. He does the print and it's cool. We got a couple of comic stuff. We got like a movie um, thing here, a kind of a, I got this image on like um, deviant art. It's cool. It, it looks nice. I mean, again, big thing is that I'm not into comic books, but I don't know if you see that in the camera on the right. Do you see it? Yes, you do. Secret Wars. So that's where I also thought of like, okay, I'm going to label it Secret Wars because we have this image here of Secret Wars and then we have the front kick plate, which is its own comic book image that's why i called it secret wars but again customers sent me all these images you know he sends me this and i try to find some filler images and that's what it is i think it looks cool i think it's awesome so like you can see here i'm going to take you on the other side i have one big image then like the big border goes around it it's cool i dig it again i'm not into the comic stuff but 
I'm just happy the customer liked it. So now, same thing here. You can see, like I said, on Spider-Man, there's one monster image here. Look at that. That's a big image right there. And then borders here, I went comic book style because Black Panther doesn't have like a theme. I don't know, like, you know, Spider-Man webs. Okay, cool. Black Panther, I don't know anything about Black Panther, but basically I just, I kept it with like a solid border. Uh, I think it looks great. I mean, it's awesome. Again, same thing. Customer gave me all of these images and it's just my job to blend it. When you get like, no, like 80 images, this to me is like the only way to make it work. There's no way to have like, you need borders to kind of separate images because not all the images are the same. They're not like the same color scheme. Like this is like old school comic theme, but this is like newer. You can just tell by like the cleanliness of the lines. Like it's difficult when it comes to that comic book stuff. It's, it's tough. Then it also translated to the, the control panel here. I think it's clean. I definitely like, I, I like how it went. Speaking of like control panels now, same thing, you know, I did the, 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 the borders and you can see like down the middle here, it's where it separates. I don't know if you could see it. I'm gonna bring it closer. This is like where it separates here. So the logo here, you could see here like the border is here for the comic book style, but then like the spider webs are right here, touched right there. So I think it looks great. Same thing with like the Spider-Man side, you got the web still. Looks awesome, I, I dig every second of it. Maybe I could take a real quick, you could see the, the buttons. Yeah, you see like the Spider-Man button, that's the input there. Tron stick is in the way. There's the other Spider-Man. And then as far as the Black Panthers, there. Marquee, Marquee I think is awesome. So Marquee, the customer didn't have any images. Um, I'm gonna just move these controllers so you can see it. The Marquee, again, it's, it's three separate images. You got your speaker panel here which basically, if you look carefully, it's the Black Panther chest and then the Spider-Man chest kind of blend in together. But this is like, you don't really see it, but again, speaker is here and I have the controller here. This though, I love this. Big, this logo I made with the Black Panther head and the Miles Morales just merged together. Then I took like the logos, then I have like the, another logo. I think it looks really cool. I, I like how this came out. Separate background, so this has like a black and purple. This has like a red abstract type of background. But the coolest feature on that, if I drop the camera down a little bit, look at underneath the TV. Like I think that, I did that purposely right there because I knew where the TV's gonna end. You got Black Panther here and then you got Spider-Man here. Miles Morales I should say. Details, that's that's what I gotta get at man, details. Now when it comes to like the four player decks, I this is a must, I have to put this here. It, cup holders, this right here is at four inches deep. The cup holders honestly is the reason why it's so deep because the cup holder is deep. So customer was like, hey Vic, are you gonna do that for me? I was like, obviously bro, I, I gotta do it for you. So he wanted this, show them who you are. I went with the Marvel theme on this, like the Marvel logo, red background, white letters, and again, same thing, it's just, it merges right in the middle. Right dead in the middle, you got your Black Panther here and then spider web here. Like it just, it's perfect, I love it. And now really the final piece is the kick plate. Uh, kick plate looks great, I'm just gonna kinda fix this USB later on, just gotta straighten it a little, but kick plate looks great. He had one like comic like this, he wanted this. He's like, I just want this one comic book front. And I think it looks great, I even left like a barcode on it. He luckily found a very high quality image of it. Probably the one only, not a downside in a bad way, it's just if you're standing up close, kind of like where you are now, you might not see the word secret. You might just see wars, but if you step back, you see it. That's probably like the only thing, but I couldn't alter that because that's just how the comic book is. Um, and that's where like the comic book starts and ends. So somebody might say, hey Vic, you should have just gotten rid of the barcode. No, because then the Secret Wars up top, I would have to stretch it and you know, the background, it's not gonna look good. But customer loved it when I sent them all the renderings. I sent him a picture of it like complete and he went like apeshit. <laughs> he loved it. All right guys, so there you guys have it. We have the Bivik 55 inch four player Secret Wars Ultimate Arcade going out just in time for Christmas. I got a bunch of videos lined up so you're gonna see videos on this. I'm gonna have the aim track video lined up. 
I got this very cool one here where per customers send me his control panel. I do that deal too, it's kind of like this, I'll, I'll go through it. And I do have a Pandora's Box 4 player, stay tuned. I got a collaboration with Ray Arpeg Electronics and Joel over at Retro Lizard Arcade Custom Arcades. Um, we're doing a California unique cabinet. So stay tuned, we got a lot of videos coming up. I got V-pins lined up. I have an insane rail shooter uh, for E-Rock. There's, there's a lot going on. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. I love what I do. I'll never get tired of it.